Here's the host with the most, the guru of love, your loveologist, Dr. Ava Cadell. Welcome to Sex Drive Radio, brought to you by our friends at Adam and Eve, America's most trusted source for adult products. Hi, I'm Dr. Ava Cadell. I'm your personal certified sexologist, and I want you to know that love and sex are the most precious gifts you can give to someone who is worthy. If you've been raised to think that sex is bad, then my special guest host today, Dr. Derek De Silva, and I are here to tell you otherwise. So give us a call in the U.S. at our toll-free number, one 877 Five six one one or international callers dial us at one seven seven two nine seven eight nine oh nine nine and if you are shy you can email us at questions at we talk sex dot com so that we can answer all your questions about sexual health relationships and intimacy if you've got questions we've got answers right here on sex drive radio so get into a juicy frame of mind and stay tuned for more. As your drive crash, Dr. Ava can fix it. Now, he's Dr. Ava Cadell. Welcome back to Sex Drive Radio, where we will support you whether you are gay or straight, black, brown, or white, or whatever your sexual appetites are, as long as it's between consenting adults. And my very special guest co-host today is Derek M. De Silva Jr., M.D. He is a practicing internist with his own radio show, live Monday to Friday, 12 to 1 p.m. Eastern Time, on healthradio.net. And he's been instrumental in the formulation of hundreds of different natural products that boost your health. So give Dr. De Silva and I a call at one eight seven 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 one one five six one one. Welcome to the show, Dr. De Silva. Well, thank you so much for the invitation, Dr. Ava. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you, and I love that you call yourself a healer and a physician. Tell me about that. Well, you know, we've for so long have forgotten that the word physician really means teacher and healer. And I think so, me, so many people, you know, you go to the doctor today, and, and, and the doctor, all he's interested or she's interested in doing is writing a bunch of drugs and getting you out of their office. I really try to get into people and say to them, well, you know, why is your blood pressure high? Why do you have an erectile problem? I mean, is there something else going on? Is there a relationship issue? So, you know, I really try to take the time and, and to really figure out what's going on underneath so that I'm not only being a physician, but really being a real healer. Yes, and you incorporate Eastern with Western medicine, don't you? Absolutely, and that is what I teach. I teach that here in New Jersey. I teach family practice residents their third year. They have to rotate through my practice. They have to come in. They have to learn. What do you do for a man or what do you do for a woman? That has that is menopausal or perimenopausal. That you know they, they have vaginal dryness. They have no libido. They're gaining weight. They're tired. They're getting fat. They don't feel good. Go to the gynecologist. And what do they say? Well, you know it's menopause. Go home and deal with it. Well, that's not what I do. What I say to them is, let's talk about your hormones. Let's see what we can do with your estrogen and progesterone. That's my approach to to wellness all the way around. Yes, and I believe, as you do, that sexual health is related to emotional health. It all begins between the ears before it goes between the legs. <laughs> Should we take a call, Dr. De Silva? Absolutely. We have Carrie on line three from New Mexico who has a question for us. Welcome to the show, Carrie. Hello, Dr. Ava. Hi, and you have Dr. De Silva on the phone. So you have a medical doctor. And you have a sexologist. So what's your question, sweetie? Well, I just had a baby about two weeks ago. And I'm just wondering whenever after the six weeks are up, I, I'm just wondering if my body is ever going to go back to normal sex-wise. And how can I, you know, try to get back to the way I was? Well, are you, are you still very overweight? No, it's not that. It's just I feel like I have a, this gaping hole that will never get small again. 
Oh, you need to start doing your Kegel exercises. What do you think, Dr. De Silva? Oh, I completely agree. You know something, dear? How old are you? I'm 22. Okay. It's going to come back to normal. Believe me, (sighs) the body has an incredible affinity to heal and repair. That gaping hole delivered a six, seven-pound baby. Is that what it was? Six, yeah. Six-pound baby. That's the usual size. You know what, dear? Honestly, what you need to do, it's going to take some time. It's probably going to take, I'm going to be honest with you, it's going to take a, a couple of months. Start exercising. Start doing some basic walking. You don't need to go to the gym and start running. Basic exercise. The weight's going to come off. If you're breastfeeding, the weight's going to come off even faster. And just give it some time. As Dr. Ava said, do the key. You know what Kegels are? Yeah. Okay. Do the Kegel exercises. And believe me, you'll be, you'll be pinching them off before you know what, promise. <laughs> and are you feeling horny, Carrie? Are you sexually active? Are you cuddling and kissing? And uh, are, you doing, are you having any sexual activity right now, or are you still a little sore? Uh, a little bit, but, I mean, I'm, I'm raring to go, but mm-hmm, I have to wait mm-hmm. four more weeks, but... I'm doing a little well, bit you here have, and there. Well, you don't have to wait to have sexual contact. There's a lot you can do. I mean, come on. You can have oral sex. You can have anal sex. That You can have mutual masturbation. There, it's not just about intercourse. So it's very important that you maintain the intimacy with your partner. And right. you don't use the pregnancy as an excuse to let intimacy and passion fade. Because a lot of people do that. And then they really regret it. Yeah, you're right. But do those vagina aerobics. Oh, I will. <laughs> the Kegels, I'm so glad to hear three that. times a day, 20 reps a day, three times a day minimum. Okay. And listen oh, to what Dr. So De Silva much. said, that you will be back to yourself. You'll have a nice, tight vagina, and everybody will be happy. <laughs> and you know what? <laughs> Please make sure, and, and I love what Dr. Ava said, it isn't about putting it in. It is all about making sure, I mean, you can surely please your husband. Yeah. You can do, I mean, my God, you can do things to him and surprise him. Uh, <laughs> you know, I, I don't want to, you know, you know what I'm talking yeah, about. Yeah, I know. <laughs> you, can, you can get creative. My God, you're 22 years old. Attack the dude and make him sorry that he ever looked at you. <laughs> <laughs> I will. Thank okay. you, doctor. Thank you for your call, Carrie. So, Dr. De Silva, before we get back to the show, I would like to introduce everybody to AdamandEve.com. They are our sponsor, our favorite sponsor, and they are America's most trusted source for adult products. And here's a special offer just for Sex Drive listeners that you won't be able to resist. You just go to AdamandEve.com. And you will get 50% off just about any item if you type in sex drive as your offer code. But that's not all. Oh, no. When you select your item and you get half off, you'll also receive three free adult DVDs plus a free extra gift, which is so sensual that I can't even talk about it on this show. And to top it all off, they're even going to throw in free shipping on your entire order. Just make sure you go to adamandeve.com and you put in S-E-X-D-R-I-V-E. Okay. So let's talk about sex. Um, Dr. De Silva, what are some of the positive health benefits of sex? You know, first of all, every single time a woman has an orgasm, do you know that there is data to support the fact that it improves a woman's skin? I do. I know that. Yeah. I know that. But not everybody else knows that. It improves a woman's skin. And, you know, there's also good data to suggest that if you have and when you have an orgasm, you boost your immune system. I mean, here we are coming into the cold and flu season. It's going to be cold. You know, have an orgasm every day. How hard is that to do? That's right. An orgasm a day will keep the doctor away. (laughs) And also, uh, Dr. Silva, there's scientific evidence that it's even a pain reliever. Yes. And I love that because, you know, chronic pain can be very debilitating and it can even relieve certain types of headaches. So the next time your lover says, oh, I'm not interested, I have a headache, say, good, let's get rid of it by having sex. Exactly. And the way that, <laughs> the way that happens is that there are certain chemicals 
uh, that the body produces that has an effect on constricting the blood vessels, on, on, on reducing headaches, meaning making them smaller. And, and that's the only thing that's going to make smaller, so don't worry about that. You don't need to get worried about other things getting smaller. No. But it is, it, is, it is a really, really good way to just, and you know what? It just makes you feel good. I mean, there is no other sensation in the world that will make you feel as good as an orgasm. And I have, I have no problem saying that because it's true. And I second that. I think that orgasms are wonderful. And I often help people who don't have orgasms. And we'll talk about that after the break. But yes, um, and the other thing, by the way, having sex is it's great exercise for your body. Did you know that it, uh, I think it's like research shows that uh, an act of sexual intercourse burns off 200 calories, yes. which is equal to running on a treadmill for like 20 minutes. Absolutely. So if you have sex two, three times a day, you're burning off you know, anywhere between four and 600 calories. It's like doing 30, 30, 40 minutes of exercise. Hey, how bad is that? Exactly. And we're going to take a break, but if you want more Sex Drive Radio, we've got more love, relationship, sexual health information right here. With Dr. Ava Cadell. Here's your host, Dr. Ava. Welcome back to Sex Drive Radio, where we want to help you get rid of any guilt or shame and enjoy your natural sex drive. My special co-host today is Dr. Derek De Silva. He is an expert on sexual health, in fact, all health. So do give us a call because if you have questions, we have answers. 1-877-711-5611. Hey, Dr. De Silva, you want to take some calls? Yes, yes. I believe that we have got a caller, and that's uh, Angelita from California. Hello there. How are you, Dr. Derek? I am fine, thank you. Oh, that's good. Dr. Ava, I can't forget about you as well. Oh, How are you? thank you. Well, I'm great. What's on your mind today? Well, I was calling because I work with women um, in the San Jose area, and one of the big things after pregnancy is what can I do to make, um, what are the top things that I could do to promote good health and good sexual and emotional health? Fabulous. And what do you tell them, Angelita? Well, basically I tell them, like Dr. DeSilva said, give it time, work on your Kegels, keep your hands on him, and keep his hands on you. Yay. That, I mean. and, <laughs> and keep a juicy state of mind. You know, exactly. a, lot, a lot of women go from sex pot mode to mommy mode, which is totally understandable with all those raging hormones. But it's all in between the ears. And after you, you've had your baby, you know, don't neglect your hubby because no. the worst thing you can do is totally forget about him, focus on the child. And then, you know, when the child is 18, they're going to leave home and you'll be in a sexless marriage. So exactly. I personally think you have to put your spouse first. He was there first. And I think rank has its privileges. What do you think, Dr. De Silva? You know, uh, I completely agree with that because I, I personally know of a couple that that is exactly what happened. This, this person put the children way ahead of the spouse. And you are oh. absolutely correct. The marriage fell apart. The children left home. And so did the husband. And oh. it, it, is, it is so important. I will tell you a couple of other things here, Angelita. Great. That there are some basic things that need to, con that need to happen post postpartum or after childbirth. Vitamin D, there's a huge, huge movement today for, for, for people to get their vitamin D levels checked. Vitamin D is absolutely critical because the baby has taken out all the calcium, all the vitamin D, so that needs to be replenished. The prenatal vitamin needs to continue for a good year, not for a month or two, for a good year to put all those nutrients back in the body, a good uh, diet, yeah. juicing, fruits and vegetables. Those are all very, very important things. Fish oil, all of those things need to come into play, and I really believe that that's important. Excellent. Thank you so much, doctors. I really appreciate it, and I love the show. And thank you for calling, Angelita. Keep up the good work. You know, that's interesting about vitamin D, Dr. De Silva, because I actually have a client who... 
uh, was prescribed vitamin D, but she was concerned because she said she had side effects of the very dry mouth. Is that a side effect you've ever heard before? I have not heard side effects of a dry mouth. And, and you know what the problem is, is that so many physicians give too high of a dose of vitamin D, meaning they give them 50,000 IU international units, you know, a week or, or, and, or sometimes even just one, a, a month, and it, it's just too much at one time. I give people lower doses, 4, 000, you know, depending on what their levels are. You've got to do the blood test first and then check what your level is. But right. I range from 1,000 to 5,000 IU a day. And if you do it that way, you usually don't see those type of side effects. So everything in moderation, Correct. even sex. Except sex. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> right. And, you know, our phone lines are open, and we have Natalie. We're going to take your call any second, Natalie. But let me just give the number out one more time. It's one eight seven 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 one one five six one one from the U.S. and Canada, and international callers, one seven seven two. Nine seven eight nine zero nine nine, or email us at questions at wetalksex dot com. Welcome to the show, Natalie from Michigan. Hi there. Hi. What's your question, sweetie? I was just wondering. I just had a baby, and I had to have a C section, and my baby's eight months old now. And still, any time me and my husband, ha- you know, have sex or anything like that, I'm just. I don't know if it's because it hurts or anything like that, but I, I'm not interested anymore, and I feel bad because, you know, he doesn't get anything out of it, but I'm just, I don't know if it's because I'm tired or it, I just, I have no, you have want no libido. to even have sex. Your libido is low. So, Dr. De Silva, do you think she needs to go and get her hormones checked first? Well, what I think, how old are you? 20. You're 20. And you, ha- you went through a normal, normal pregnancy delivery. Well, she, had the a whole- C- she had a C-section. Right, right. But you had a section, but everything else was relatively normal. Um, I was in and out of the hospital the entire time that I was pregnant. For? Oh, no. Why? Um, they kept saying that I kept getting infections and that I just, I kept getting dehydrated really quickly. And- uh-huh. Okay. What it sounds like you need to do, Natalie, is yes, you need to go back to your OBGYN because what you need to do is as you, as you progress, now eight months is, is, is should be plenty of time for you to get your libido back and get everything going here. Go back to your doctor. Make sure that you don't have a thyroid problem. A lot of times postpartum, women will develop what is called an autoimmune thyroiditis, and the thyroid completely goes out of whack, where you start to gain weight, you lose your your libido, go go to your doctor, see your OBGYN first, and then go see your primary care doctor and make sure your thyroid is checked and your blood sugar is checked, and make sure also that you're not anemic, because if if your blood count is low, those two are going to affect you. Hmm. So, so how they, would I how would I go about asking like what kind of what question would I ask to, for them to check it? Well, what you need to say is, can I have some basic blood work done? And the basic blood work would include a thyroid blood test, a blood sugar, and to check your blood count to make sure that you're not anemic. Okay. And Natalie, how are you emotionally? You said that you might be very tired. Are you exhausted? Are you stressed out? Do you have anxiety? How do you feel emotionally? Um, for some reason, ever since my daughter was born, I've been, like, it, I get excited about certain things, but it, it's hard for me to stay excited. You know, I'm only happy for a short amount of time before I just get bogged down with stress or exhaustion or something like that because my husband works all the time so I'm the one with the baby 24 7 so it's like you know I never believed my parents when they said when you become a mom you never get a break and now I understand oh but what makes so what makes you happy what makes you feel relaxed and happy spending time with my husband okay so we need to get you a babysitter and you need to go out on a date once a week, just a romantic date where you don't talk about the baby, you don't talk about problems, and it doesn't even have to result in intercourse. It just needs to be romantic. You guys need to do the things you used to do before the baby was born, and now's the time to start rekindling the romance in your relationship. Don't put it on the back burner. 
But do okay. do what Dr. De Silva said and get physically checked. Make that a priority. Okay. Thank you for your call, Natalie. Thank you. Good luck to you. Well, we've got a lot of baby questions today, Dr. De Silva. Yeah, and, and it, you know, the other thing, Dr. Ava, is I wanted to tell her is that postpartum depression oh, yes. is, is also, and, and when you asked a question about how she feels emotionally, you hit it right, you hit the nail right on the head. And, and that is another thing that women need to be aware of is that this is a real, Mary Jo Cody, her, she was the, she's the, was the former first lady of the state of New Jersey who went through a severe postpartum depression where she actually was thinking about hurting herself and her children and has admitted this on TV. In fact, she was on my show. So this is another issue that makes sure you address that with your doctor. Very good point. And, you know, changing the subject just a little bit, I want to talk about masturbation and how important it is to maintain prostate health. But I think we're going to take a break first. Welcome back to Sex Drive Radio, where we know that sex is between the ears, not just between the legs. I'm here with Dr. Derek De Silva, and we're talking about sexual health. And just before the break, I asked Dr. De Silva what he thought about masturbation to keep the male prostate healthy. Of course, women don't have a prostate, but... <laughs> well, I, I think the G-spot is the equivalent to our prostate. Well, the, you know, I'll tell you, the pro as far as prostate health goes, there's no question that an ejaculation is, is very, very healthy. Not only does it feel good, it's just overall, as I said before, for the immune system, good for your body. And it is good for your prostate. You know, so at any age, you know, it, it, it's just an important thing. And as we were just talking about at the break, you don't need an excuse to have sex. Just enjoy it. Enjoy the relationship. And you know what? There are a lot of people, and, and you asked me the question before we went to break, about masturbation. I mean... My goodness gracious, if sometimes it, time does not allow for you to be with your partner or your partner is not there and you just want to do it alone, well, it's good for your prostate. Go for it. I don't have a problem with it. And it's good for women, too. Oh, goodness gracious. It's <laughs> <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. I, I, I love what you said about the, the whole mutual masturbation and watching. And It's I, so I think exciting. And not only is it exciting, it's safe for sex. Mm -hmm. And also it's a great way to learn how your partner likes to be touched, where they like to be touched, how they reach an orgasm. So it has therapeutic value as well as, you know, eroticism visually. So I recommend mutual <laughs> masturbation. I, um, it's so true because men... You know, I, I think sometimes men just don't take the time. They need, to, they need to ask the woman, what do you like? How do you want me to do this? Where do you want me to touch? By the way, I have to tell you something. I know anatomy like you have no idea. I know anatomy so well that I could teach most men where women need to be touched. And oh. it, I'm serious because that is the key. Most men have no idea where the clitoris is. Men have oh, they dive into it and chew on it as if it's made out of beef jerky. Exactly. There's a <laughs> way to do that. There's a way to touch it. There's a way to do it orally. Then there's this whole wonderful thing called the G-spot. And the way to find it is, is it, there, there are such wonderful techniques in, in exploration. And that toys you, that can find it, too. I'm sorry? And there's toys that can help you find it uh, if you you're lost. Talk to me, you can talk to me about that all night. I'd love that. Uh, Hey, let's take another call. We have Chris, who actually has a question about, about prostate health. So, welcome to the show, Chris. You're talking to Dr. Aver and Dr. Derek De Silva. Yeah, hello, doctors. How are you? Good. Good, thanks. What's oh, your question, I sweetie? You know, wondering about the you know, strategies with, with diet that could um, enhance uh, uh, prostate health. Uh, as far as diet goes? Yes, sir. Well... One of the big things with regard to diet, with regard to prostate health, is first of all, just, with, with just across the board, the healthier you are, the more it's going to help. There are, when it comes to the prostate, there are something called phytosterols. Uh, beta testosterol is, is in that category. In fact, these products, uh, these dietary supplements are use, also used to reduce uh, people's cholesterols. So 
there's a you get a dual effect with that, and that's the beauty of it. But as far as diet goes for prostate health, I think I would number one have to say um, uh, lifestyle. I think exercise, mm-hmm. and as far as diet goes, I'm I'm saying low sugar because sugar is an inflammatory product. You don't want inflammation in your prostate, so low sugar. Uh, get off the white products, white bread, white flour. Drink mm-hmm. lots of water, and make sure you just take a good multivitamin. But the basics. Eat well, drink lots of water, and exercise. Yeah, and Chris, think, yeah, Chris, definitely. stimulate your prostate. Have you have you ever heard of milking your prostate or prostate milking? Mm, uh, yeah, vaguely. Uh, go ahead. Vaguely. Well, have you have you explored your prostate? Have you? Does your partner insert anything in there? Does it feel good? Uh, no. No? Okay, well, then there you go. Now's your opportunity to try it. You might like it. Yes, a lot of men say they have an intense orgasm. So this is the opportunity. I want you to try it and then call us back and let us know how you liked it. All right, then. Hey, Chris, (laughs) let me ask you something. How old are you? Uh, 46. Okay, listen, man. What you need to do is you need to explore that. I'm not not saying you need to stick a whole hand up there, okay? (laughs) What I'm saying is is that you need to explore that avenue. The prostate for you, you're in your mid-40s, it's mm-hmm. got to stay with you. It's got to keep working for you. So do some exploration. All right, then. Sounds Happy great. hunting. <laughs> 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 Thank you for your call, Chris. So before we move on, I have to tell you about a very special offer that we have right here for Sex Drive listeners from adamandeve.com. If you go to adamandeve.com, you're going to get 50% off one item as long as you type in Sex Drive for the offer code. And let me tell you, they have amazing toys that will help you find your G-Spot and your prostate, or stimulate the clitoris, whatever you want. They have thousands, thousands of toys. And when you go to adaminib.com, you'll save 50% off, but you'll also get free, three free DVDs, adult movies. Yes, they have lots of adult movies with stars like Jenna Jameson and Tara Patrick, and they can get you in the mood, even if you've got a low libido watching porn i think has therapeutic value i love it so go to adamandeve.com make sure you use the offer code of sex drive and enjoy are we having fun or what dr de silva i i as i said to you before you can invite me anytime i'm happy oh, to talk to you lovely well you've given some really great advice today so let's wrap it all up about sexual health why should we make sex a priority in our lives? The reason you should make sex a priority in your life is because, first of all, it's good for you. There is no question that a healthy sex drive is going to keep you healthy. Think about this. If you don't feel like having sex, you're either depressed, you, 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 you just don't feel good. When you feel good, you want to have sex. Is it, is it chicken or the egg? You know what, folks? What you need to do is you need to find somebody that you can really relate to and that you can really connect with, and then the sex becomes unbelievable. The bottom line is sex is the best thing that you can do for your body. Do it. Very good point. And we actually have an email here. Um, What if you've had a heart attack? Can it still have a protective effect against future heart attacks? If you've had a heart attack, the recommendation is that you don't engage in sexual activity for anywhere from two to three weeks so that the heart will heal. I mean, most most people usually take that break anyway. The bottom line is if if you've had a heart attack, you're on medications, do not use anything like Viagra or Cialis or anything like that without checking with your doctor. So it will, it will heal, if you will, over a period of time, and sex is, is absolutely protective all the way across the board, but you must check with your doctor as to when you can have sex after you've had a heart attack. And if you haven't had a heart attack, studies show that sexually active people suffer from fewer heart attacks, and they actually live longer. So how's that for a reason to have sex? Well, I'm going to live longer. <laughs> I, 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 I'm, I'm all for that, and I, think peop- I honestly believe that people should have sex or they should have an orgasm every single day. I truly yes. believe that, and I actually practice that. 
And we're not talking about one-night stands. We're not no. promoting, you know, a sexual uh, addiction in any way. You don't have to have a partner. Masturbation is good for your health mentally, physically, emotionally, even spiritually. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, we're, we're promoting safe, loving, healthy, spiritual, fantastic sex. Absolutely. Absolutely. Wow, this has been so great. I just love talking to you because you really are an expert on a lot of the, you know, the diet things, the the supplements. You know a lot about supplements because you've created over a hundred of them, I believe. What is the best supplement to boost your sex drive before we go to a break. Can you tell us that? I think one of the best things that you can do for your 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 as far as sex goes is would be something like coenzyme Q10. Coenzyme Q10 or COQ10 is a cellular energy nutrient. For men that have problems with sperm motility, that is a very very good thing to increase sperm motility. It's an energy nutrient and it's just absolutely fabulous for you just across the board. Is that for men and women? Men and women. Amazing. Thank you so much for being my my co-host and I hope we can do it again and again and again like multiple orgasms. I Thank love you, multiple orgasms. Thank you for the invitation. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. De Silva. God bless. Good night. I'm going to be right back with my beautiful celebrity Candice Kita. She's gorgeous. She's an actress. She's a model. She's an author. Don't go away because I'm going to interview her. And she's got a lot to say about sex. She even wrote a book called The Hottie Handbook. Hey, guys. I was your average lover in the sack until I enrolled in LovologyUniversity.com. And I learned new ways to please my partner and myself. Now I've been told that I am a great lover again and again. Enroll now if you want to find love or improve your relationship at LovologyUniversity.com or give us a call toll free at one 40 love you love and the letter U. Welcome back to Sex Drive Radio, where we believe that sex is one of the greatest gifts to the human race, and sharing yourself with someone who is worthy is a very precious gift. And I'm so happy to say that our celebrity guest is here. She is gorgeous. She's an actress. She's a model and an author. Her name is Candace Keita. And you may have seen her in over 40 episodes of Fox TV's Masked Rider or as a series recurring character on ABC's Complete Savages with Mel Gibson. She was also a regular in Son of the Beach on FX Running with Scissors on Oxygen, and Dance Fever on ABC Family. On the big screen, Candace can be seen in the Adam Sandler comedy, I Now Pronounce You Chuck and Larry, The Bad News Bears with Billy Bob Thornton, and Stealing Time with Jennifer Garner. And as if that wasn't enough, Candace Keeter authored a book called The Hottie Handbook. Welcome to the show, Candace. Oh, hi, Dr. Ava. How are you? Wow, you are multi-talented and gorgeous. Oh, well, thank you so much. I really appreciate that. Oh, you're welcome. So what are you working on right now, Candace? Well, right now, you know, I just finished shooting the series finale for a show. I think you've heard of it. It's called Nip Tuck. I love that show. I've even worked on it myself. Love it. Oh, awesome. What did you do on the show? What I did was for the videos, I was commenting on all of the storylines because you may know all of the storylines are based on real things that happened. Like when a dog bit off a girl's nipple, Uh I was commenting on how that could happen if you're into bestiality. (laughs) (laughs) But you were an actress on it. What did you play? Oh, well, you know, that's the thing. Because it is the series finale, it is not the, the end of the season. It's the end of the entire show. I was a guest star on the, the uh, last episode, and so I signed a contract, so we cannot talk about um, what the last episode is. Okay. Everybody just has to tune in, and you've got to watch in 2010, and you'll see a very cheeky episode of uh, Nip Tuck. But it's funny that you mentioned that it's based on real... Um, uh, uh, situations because ours was based on a real situation and I didn't know that every episode was. Yes, absolutely. That's, that's, you know, part of the writer's plan is to make it real, make it edgy, but make it real. Well, so it's yes. not, you're going to be in the climax of Nip Tuck. I love that. Yeah. Oh, I'm so excited. But yeah, truth is stranger than fiction. So when you see this episode, you will definitely, I believe, you, you won't even believe it. So you'll have to tune in. 
<laughs> Very cool. Now, I really want to talk about your book, the Haughty Handbook that you wrote, because I know you have a fabulous motto. And then I want you to share with us some of the tips that you have for safety in the book that's on dating and sex. Oh, so sure, what's your absolutely. motto first? You've got this well, great motto. Yes, it is the, the motto for um, I have a radio show called Haughty Help. And we broadcast in Los Angeles each Sunday from 2 to 3 p.m. And also, the book is called The Haughty Handbook, A Girl's Guide to Safety. And our motto is, be sexy, be smart, be safe. And the three S's. I love that. I know. It's awesome. And it's short, succinct, and to the point. And what it really means is, be as sexy and as beautiful and just the gorgeous goddess that you are. And I'm telling women, just be as wonderfully sexy as you want to be, but also know how to be smart and how to take care of yourself and how to be safe if somebody behaves inappropriately towards you. And that's what we talk about in the Haughty Handbook. And we have various topics such as dating, surfing the Internet, campus safety, travel safety, work safety. And we just teach young women how to protect yourself. Uh, like when you, for instance, uh, you get your first um, uh, apartment by yourself or you're getting your first job. And so we just have ver- very valuable and easy safety tips that are um, in this handbook. And it's a fun book. It's a fun book. Well, it's a very valuable book, too, because a lot of young girls are very vulnerable. And there's a lot of guys that will take advantage of them. And so you're really doing a great service to young women everywhere. You are empowering them. You're giving them the confidence that they need. It, so it really, thank you. It is. It's about empowerment. And it's about, I think as young women, quite often we are, are told, we are raised to be, you know, be polite, be nice, you know, don't cause a fuss, don't cause a problem. But I think that there are times in your life when it's okay to stand up for yourself. And like you said, to be empowered and to say no and to be bold And I really try to teach that to women in the book that it's okay to behave that way if somebody is behaving, you know, inappropriately towards you. So let me ask you, you are an absolutely beautiful-looking, sexy-looking woman. Did a man ever disrespect you or treat you in a way that wasn't appropriate, which made you write this book? Absolutely. You know, I had, um, because I'm an actress, I had uh, a stalking experience, and I don't know if you've ever talked about stalking on your show before, but, um, yeah, I had a five-year stalking experience by a man that I ended up never meeting, and uh, it ended up going to the court system, and I received, uh, he took a plea bargain, so I received a two-year protective order from the state of uh, California, and it made me realize that if I had this problem as an actress and a model, um, the majority of stalking victims are everyday people. And that means there's a lot of women out there that need the valuable information that I researched and learned and, and took five years to, you know, go through. Uh, I, I researched on the Internet. I worked with the LAPD Threat Management Unit here in Los Angeles. I also worked with the FBI here on my case. And so I felt like I had so much, just a plethora of information having done this for so long to build up to my case, that I thought, you know, I never had a desire to write a book, but I really feel like I should write a book for other women that I know are in the same situation as me. And and I think that was probably very good therapy for you. Sometimes the best things come out of adversity. So so I'm so happy that you did that. So let me ask you to finish this sentence, Candice. Mm -hmm. I wish men would... Listen when a woman says no. Um, I think a lot of times... And society, stop. Listen and stop. Listen and stop, yes. Yes. That's right, that's right. I think in our society we're taught, um, just keep trying, go for it. Uh, or they think that when a woman says, no, I'm not particularly interested uh, in you for whatever reason, it means, oh, just keep trying. She really doesn't mean it. She doesn't mean it. I can just keep doing this. And it's disrespecting the woman. And it's, it's not listening to what she is saying to you. And but, not- you know, the problem is, Candace. let's be really honest here. Women sometimes do play games and they say no when they mean yes or maybe. And this is the problem. Mm-hmm. I think mm-hmm. that a lot of men don't know when they're playing or teasing. 
You know, that's a very good point that you bring up. Um, and I would say, conversely, the question that you gave me, which is, you know, men should say no, I should say women should learn not to play um, those games because you send the wrong signals or mixed messages uh, to men, and it's confusing. Exactly. Or oh, they should be very, you know, um, assertive and say, stop now. You know, it's, it's not only what you say, but it's how you say it is very, very important. Because, you know, if you just say, oh, no, 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 you know, that, then that doesn't sound really serious. Exactly. And you have to say it firmly with conviction. Um, you know, be a strong, assertive woman. You know, be empowered and say, no, thank you so much. I am not interested. Knowing this, I'm sure you will go on with your life or you, you right. will speak elsewhere. So um, let's talk about something positive before we end this interview. Sure, what does absolutely. a romantic evening look like for Candace? Oh, a romantic evening. You know, I'm such a foodie and I love chocolate. And so anybody who's going to take me out on a date, if you take me to a chocolatier, I would be so happy. And then maybe coming back and watching the movie Chocolat. I love that movie, Candace. <laughs> oh, my God, that's one of my favorite movies. And I also love chocolate. Isn't that funny? Me, too. I love that movie. I can watch it over and over and over again. And it, it's inspiring and sensual and sexy. And, oh, I just love it. Wow, we have so much in common. Finally, how do you think men perceive you at first glance? You know, that's a really good question. Um, sometimes, because I'm Asian, I think that the stereotype of uh, the subservient piece of jade may come to mind. But I, I <laughs> and you're think, definitely not that. I think as soon as they speak to me, they, they understand that I do hold my ground. But um, I'm also petite, too, so I wonder if uh, they find that... Um, they think that maybe I'm going to be demure or something. So maybe but you're that's... very voluptuous. Oh, thank you. Sometimes too much. I, I eat way too much chocolate. <laughs> no, I think you're perfect. And I want to thank you because it's the end of our show. I want to con you know, ha have you back again. But until then, continued success, Candice, with all that you do. Thank you so much. Thank you, Dr. Ava. You too. I'd like to thank my special guest co-host, Dr. Derek De Silva, my producer, Christy, social media coordinator, Nikki, engineers, Ron, Ray, Shane, phone screener, Kevin. Special thanks to adamandeve.com, as always. And this is Dr. Ava Cadell, looking forward to being with you next week, Monday through Thursday at wetalksex.com. Until then, go celebrate good, healthy love and sex with an SNL sandwich. That's a generous helping of sex between, between two big slices of love.